Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope everybody has had a great week. I hope you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Students, in this class we are looking at IELTS listening, focusing on part three and four. Uh, the listening section has four parts um, and uh, we did part one and two last week. If you missed that class, it's totally okay. You can check that out on the channel. Um, this is a subscribers chat class. Uh, it's a good idea to subscribe to our channel because then you can see those videos and you can join this chat and get notifications. Um, this uh, particular listening part three will be about trade. Uh, part four will be about a specific artist, Michael Angelo. And these listening materials, this practice exam, is uh, coming from um, our website, aehelp.com, that's Academic IELTS, and General IELTS, gieltshelp.com. We have lots of practice exams, courses, strategies, videos on those websites. We're going to use our Academic IELTS website in just a moment uh, for our listening. Welcome, Chen. Hi, Anton. Fuang, Chayani, good to see many members in the class. That's awesome. Uh, Zippy, Ridam, Jasmine, uh, Anani, Masha, nice to see many subscribers in the class as well. That's fantastic. Uh, students, uh, if you have questions about the IELTS or English, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, uh, or you can also send my team an email, admin at aehelp.com. We are here to help you succeed on the IELTS exam. We love helping people reach their goals and dreams, getting into university, uh, getting immigration. It's fantastic. Uh, students, uh, we've got uh, two more classes for you tomorrow. We've got speaking part two for members. We've got speaking part three for everybody. Again, make sure to subscribe so you can see this uh, schedule that's uh, here. And to practice your speaking today, uh, check out this recent video that we just put out there. It's a good one. Um, I put the link in the chat there for you. Um, you know what, I'll replace the, the pin. So I'll pin it to the top and then you can check that out. Um, so uh, yeah, we've got lots of help. Let's get into some listening. Um, this is our Academic IELTS website here. This is what we're using for our listening audio today. You can join our premium IELTS uh, course by clicking that big red button that's above my head. It's a one-time payment, it's lifetime access. And um, we help thousands of students every day. You can see all of their success stories uh, when you have a minute, it's a good idea. Learn how other people did it, how other people passed the IELTS exam. You can even click on that and then you can see tons and tons of um, success stories uh, from people all around the world. And we're really happy about helping all these people. So become one of our success stories. Um, at the top here, I'm just going into my student account. I'm logged in. I've got premium access, of course, as I should. Um, and then you've got all these goodies here and today, uh, so you've got the computer-based IELTS practice exams, you've got an interactive course, works on your phone as well, of course. And then we've got this, uh, for those of you who have the course, we're um, going to this tab here. Uh, this is the, uh, the IELTS audio CDs, okay? And uh, this one right now is our fifth exam. So uh, we are going to um, do this one here. You see it says section three here, but your latest exams, they say part three. They don't say section three. They'll say part three. Okay. Um, so we're in this one here and you can see here it says uh, CD five track three. So that's basically telling you which CD it is on the website. And that's the PDF that you download, but yours will be a white page, not a blue page. Course. Um, so students, use a headphone, use a headset for this. Uh, let's listen, let's answer these questions. Um, uh, answer while you listen, but put the answers into a separate document so you don't confuse other students. And, um, <clears throat> and then we'll go through the answers at the end uh, together and I will show you strategies how to get those answers correct on your um, IELTS 
uh, exam, okay? Jonah, good luck on your January exam. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. I'm checking the uh, chat all the time. Okay, uh, let's hop to uh, CD5, track three, because this is uh, part three. And everybody should hear it clearly. Clearly, if you have problems hearing the audio, let me know, okay? All right. Now turn to section three. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening, section three. You will hear a forum discussion between the moderator and two contributors, Dr. Rachel Young and Dr. Ronald Sturgeon, both political scientists at the local university, talking about trade between countries. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Young and Dr. Sturgeon for taking the time to spend this afternoon with us. Thank you for having us here today. Dr. Young, could you give us a little background on the topic of free trade and protectionism, a little history? Well, countries and nation states have been participating in free trade schemes for millennia. The ancient Egyptians, for example, participated in trade with the Arabians across the Red Sea over 3,000 years ago. The Roman Empire imported many goods from outside their lands, especially luxury goods such as silk, which were only available in China. Free trade, however, though, has much younger roots. Could you define free trade and protectionism for us, Dr Sturgeon? Free trade is trade between countries without taxes, tariffs or other regulations attached. Without a free trade agreement, nations charge taxes or tariffs on goods that are imported to their country. This is to protect the manufacturers within their country. If country A, for example, produces a product for a 20% higher cost than country B, country A is likely to impose a tariff on the importation of country B's cheaper product into country A. This is to level the playing field for domestic manufacturers. Free trade advocates want to take down this barrier. In my opinion, advocates of free trade do not care about domestic manufacturers and workers in their own country. I believe their only intention is to maximize profit for big international businesses. I know Dr. Sturgeon is impassioned about protectionism, but what he fails to mention is that while free trade may lead to some lost jobs in certain sectors, it leads to many other jobs in other sectors. This may be cold comfort to those in, say, manufacturing or textiles, but we must not be blind to the needs of the many and be distracted by the needs of the few. Nobody says free trade between countries is perfect, but it is certainly better than a protectionist framework which costs the country jobs and prosperity. Another point I would like to make is that free trade increases competition and thus lowers the price of many goods. This saves consumers money. Purchasing a car, for example, is much cheaper under free trade agreements. While such agreements may appear undesirable for a British company such as Land Rover, since they are given price disadvantage within the United Kingdom, this is not the whole story. While it is true that the company is at a minor disadvantage within their home country, free trade agreements puts them in an equally advantageous position in other countries in which the UK has a free trade agreement. You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion 
and answer questions 27 to 30. This is a very interesting discussion. Dr Sturgeon, from reading some of your work, I know you have some ethical concerns about free trade. Yes, I have a number of ethical concerns. First and foremost, free trade agreements incentivize highly unethical sweatshops. When countries such as the United Kingdom enter free trade agreements with countries with lower human rights standards, we put ourselves at risk of tacitly endorsing those low human rights standards. Is the ability to wear slightly cheaper clothing really worth selling out on one of our most basic beliefs, that people should be treated with respect? I agree with Dr Sturgeon that human rights is an ongoing issue in free trade. Certain incidents, such as sweatshops collapsing and killing dozens of workers, have highlighted this issue in the media and public discourse. But these are isolated incidents. Hardly. These are not isolated at all. And even if such horrible incidents were rare, does it make the conditions those workers work in permissible? Do we excuse horrible working conditions as long as the workers don't die? That's an incredibly low bar, and one I believe we must implore companies and governments to raise. OK, OK, let's move on. Dr Young, do you believe free trade betters the life of the average British citizen? Absolutely. I believe free trade agreements make us more prosperous as a society. While not perfect, I truly believe pursuing free trade agreements is a positive step in making our world a better place. Of course I disagree. While I do not doubt that more wealth comes into our country as a result of free trade agreements, I believe this money never improves the life of the average citizen. The rich get richer and the middle class workers get laid off. Not to mention the ethical issues I have with this. That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, everyone. That's part three. Part three is that challenging, okay? Be careful with lots of practice materials online. I hear this from our students all the time. They're like, oh, I was searching for some practice listening and reading materials online and they were so easy. And then I got to the real exam and I was like, whoa, what? It's like that. It's like that. Um, so that's, um, you know, I, we have some people in here who uh, have taken the real exam and I'm sure many of you will say that, yeah, that's part three could be that kind of a topic to listen to. Um, Sarah, I know that you've taken the exam, our uh, moderator, and Chayani, I think you're in here, you've taken the exam as well. Would you agree part three can be that kind of a conversation? It can be that challenging or difficult? Okay, so again, that was coming from our website. Uh, to get all of those exams, you can join the premium package by clicking that big red button. Um, now let's go back to answering these questions. Okay, and I'll show you some of the strategies that I used. Okay, so be ready, students. Part three, part four of the listening. Um, yeah, they're, you know, they challenge you to understand natural situations, conversations, professors, lectures. Okay. KD, good luck on your exam tomorrow. I just saw that comment. Uh, Chayani says, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, KD, come back and share your experience for sure. Okay, so um, part one, quite easy. Part two, so-so. Part three, part four, they're a lot more challenging for sure, okay? All right, um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at these questions and I'll show you what I did. Okay, for strategies, all right? So again, everybody, I caution you one more time, be very careful with online example materials that are too easy or materials in classes that are too easy. Um, make sure to practice your listening and your reading with materials that are the same difficulty as the real IELTS exam, okay? It's a very important tip. Okay, um, so here, it's an interview. It has an introduction, it has a beginning, it has an end, okay? So keep in mind, students, that some of these um, uh, listening parts, so certain listening uh, parts are um, an interview or discussion they introduce a uh, topic 
debate the topic, and then come to a conclusion. Okay, this is common for part three. Okay. Because it's kind of, you know, like situations in real life. So in university or at your workplace, these are typical kinds of situations where somebody introduces a topic, you have to discuss it, debate it, good and the bad, and then you have to come to a decision. Okay, so as long as you know that this is what you're listening to, um, then you're okay, all right? Now, you can practice this at home where you just focus on these three, okay? On um, first, introduction of the topic, then uh, the debate of the topic, and then uh, the, um, the conclusion to the topic, okay? So, um, before we even look at these questions, everybody, and before we look at the answers, um, what is the topic in this case? All right. Artist, every exam is the same difficulty. It's not like the one on the 24th will be more difficult. Okay. Okay. So what is the topic? Chen says free trade. Um, not quite, Chen. Uh, Fuang, right, it's trade. Okay, um, and um, what are the two subtopics? Trade? Uh, what are the two types of trade? I mean, if you can't understand this, you're having, you know, you're going to have some, some difficulty. So it's free trade versus what? Yeah, Alexander, it's international trade, so it's trade between countries. Yep, you're right about that. Trade, international trade. They don't actually say that, but yeah, we can say international trade. Okay, <clears throat> so it's uh, free trade, and what's the other type? It's good to know this, especially for business students, economists, so those of you going into marketing business. Chen says paid trade or something like that, yeah. Um, so it's called protectionism. Okay, think of the word protection, protectionism. So they debate this topic, which is better? Right? All right. Um, so why is free trade better? What do they say? So why is it better when we can trade between countries without having to pay tax or any kind of tariff? Um, so they give a good and the bad, right? Uh, students, again, you do have to understand the main ideas of your listening. If you can't, you're not going to get a good score, okay? Uh, by trying to uh, hear keywords um, or um, phrases and match them, you're not going to get a good band score. Those days are done. Uh, exam technology has progressed a lot, and the days of I'm going to get a good uh, score on the listening by matching some keywords, those are finished. Those finished with TOEIC, okay? So you do have to understand the main ideas, and you can. You don't have to understand every word. You just have to understand the main ideas. I will show you how to do this, okay? Um, Alexander says, free trade is better because it provides uh, lower prices for consumers. Yeah, sure. Um, there was another reason. Why else? Okay. Now. The reason you want to understand this is because when you do, you can use your own information, okay? So it is very important to understand the main ideas 
in each part so you can use your own knowledge okay um, and um, by the way let me show you something here so let me show you something um, so when you go to um, a good textbook like the ones that you find on our website or the Cambridge past papers they have these as well okay and then um, you go to the uh, transcripts the transcripts are the audio scripts found at the back of the book so for ours we have it on page 134 for this one so let me jump to 134 here um, so test 5 transcripts okay that's part 1 uh, part 2 part three okay so there's the transcripts okay uh, you can see it here CD5 okay all right um, so uh, it says you know now turn to section three take some time to look at questions 21 to 26 listening section three you will hear a forum discussion between a moderator and two contributors and then it keeps going and of course, logically, the moderator introduces the speakers and the topic, okay? So here, the moderator says, Dr. Young, could you give us a little background on the topic of free trade and protectionism? A little history? And Dr. Young says, well, countries and nation states have been participating in free trade schemes for millennia okay and then they keep going okay and then the moderator here says um, could you define free trade and protectionism for us dr. Sturgeon so here you have free trade and protectionism here, the moderator introduces the debate topic, okay? When you're practicing IELTS listening, and in usually in part three, sometimes in part two, you'll have this kind of a comparison type of topic where you compare A to B, okay? Again, pay very careful attention to catching the uh, two points for comparison sometimes what happens to candidates on the IELTS exam is they're not really paying attention they're only trying to hear keywords they're not thinking about the big ideas or the main ideas and they don't catch the comparison and then they're just like what's happening of course right like what's happening if you don't understand it you're going to be like what's happening okay so um, make sure you you capture that comparison because now you know that okay we've got two sides we've got free trade we've got protectionism so in this audio they're going to be talking back and forth about these two sides and then you will be able to do this where you'll be able to go oh okay so why is free trade better it provides lower prices for consumers it increases competition okay why is free trade bad? Because it um, promotes uh, division of wealth. So it promotes rich to get richer, uh, poor to get poorer, destroys a local economy. Okay, so, and more or less, that's what they say. Now, if you know this, right, that's even better. If you're like, oh, I'm studying economics, this is my thing, this is my cup of tea, then, um, then that will help you even more, as long as you catch it, right? Why is protectionism better? Um, because, um, sorry, protectionism is uh, better because it protects uh, local producers, Okay, um, and it's bad because uh, businesses leave. Okay, 
the country. Um, now, there's more, right? But those are the ones that come to mind for me now, and that's fine, okay? And those are kind of the conclusions as well, all right? Um, Alexander says there's human rights violations as well. Exactly. You remembered that, Alexander. That's fantastic, okay? So let's go back. Let's answer these questions, all right? Um, 40... Seven. There we go. Okay. So we'll answer these questions before we got into the answers. Again, just uh, to reiterate, it's very important that you understand. You can't just match sounds and match words um, to get a good score. So here, uh, question 21. How long ago was the first record of trade between nations? Um, what does the speaker say? Okay, now they have the measure, they have the measure years, so you don't need to put years. If you write years in your paper-based exam, you're gonna get it wrong. Zepi Chen, Fuang, Pujan, Samantha, 3000, yes it is. Okay, so the correct answer here is just 3000 years ago so all you need is the number 3000 okay now notice how here I even wrote this down so I did some notes here okay so write down the main topic in your notes okay you shouldn't take a lot of notes in the aisles because you have to answer why you listen, but you should write down notes, for example, on the main topics like uh, free trade versus protectionism. Okay, so now you have a flow chart. In the flow chart, identify key points that are easy to listen for, like 20% higher than country B. Okay, so here, um, a company in country A imports the product. If the country does not have a free trade agreement, the company must pay a what? Pay attention to the words that come before the blank and after the blank to import. So here, the correct answer is tax or tariff. Both are okay. Tariff is the exact word. That's the sure word, but uh, tax is okay as well right this is to level the playing field um, students candidates when you see these uh, quotation marks what does that mean so in the uh, question booklet when you see these quotation marks Quotation marks are those little cat ears. We call them little cat ears. So when you see this quotation marks, what does what does that mean? What do those mean? Uh, Anahita, yeah, tariff and attacks are the same. They're the same. That's why you can use both. <clears throat> so what does that mean when you see those quotation marks? Yeah, Anahita, exactly. It's direct speech. So if it's direct speech, what does that mean for you, the listener? Because, of course, the questions in the question booklet are not the same as what you're hearing. You notice that, right? When you're practicing odds, that they're paraphrasing. They're using different words in the audio than what you see on your, in your question booklet. It means they will use the exact same words. Okay, so you will hear that exact same phrase, right? So when you see the quotation marks, you know that one of the speakers will actually say level the playing field. That's the only time, all right? It's very important that all of you understand this clearly, okay? Um, the only time, The only time you are guaranteed that you will hear the exact same words in the audio, in the IELTS audio, as what you see 
in your question booklet or on the screen if you're doing the computer-based exam or on the computer screen is when you see the uh, quotation marks. Okay, otherwise most of the audio will paraphrase the information in the questions, meaning they will not use the same words. So for the same reason that skimming and scanning doesn't work in the reading section, uh, trying to match words in the listening usually does not work, right? Uh, quotation marks show direct speech. They're basically showing you that somebody in the audio will use these words exactly, okay? Everybody got that? So everybody clear on that, all right? So here, I see the quotation marks, so I know that I'm listening for this exact phrase, level the playing field, because it is an idiom, and I have to listen for it and catch where they use that idiom, okay? So, Rakwea Chen on to say yes. So I have to be like, okay, when are they gonna use that idiom? I have to, because if I don't know the idiom, I have to really pay attention to the audio. And then I hear it. So they say, level the playing field for somebody okay for who anybody catch the answer for 23 very good Rakwea. very good zippy well zippy the second word is not good but the first word was good you have to get both right zippy so domestic manufacturers, okay? Both words have to be accurate. It's the only way to get that correct, okay? Domestic manufacturers are the local producers. They're the people within the country, within the city, within the province or the state that make the products locally. So they're the people, the local farmers, the local factories and so forth, okay? Um, those are the domestic. Domestic means at home. Manufacturers means producers, all right? Okay, um, so if the countries do have a free trade agreement, the company does not have to pay the import on the item. Uh, some advocates of protectionism believe free trade advocates are only worried about maximizing something. Now, here's they, don't, they didn't say large corporations. Anybody remember what they said instead of large corporations? Yeah, Fuang Chayani, everybody says, okay, the answer is profit, maximizing profit. Yeah, profit is correct. Anybody remember, um, so a little bonus question here, what they said instead of large corporations? LTD says big companies, almost. It wasn't big companies though, LTD. I don't think it was. I'm gonna check, but I, I remember something different. Raquia says international, international companies. Now this is where you want to practice your ability to catch paraphrasing and then of course learn the new vocabulary. So I, I, think, I think it was big businesses. Okay. But you know what, let's check. Uh, we can do that pretty fast. Again, um, you can check this by uh, going to uh, the transcripts it's on page 134. So let me, oh, a little bit past it. Yeah, so here somewhere. Um, yeah, it'll be here. Yeah, okay. Somebody says, I yeah, see, it was a good combination. So here it is. Um, you can see in the transcripts, um, it gives you the uh, answer. It shows you number 24. This is where you find the answer from the audio. And then um, it says, I believe their only intention is to maximize profit. So there's your answer, profit, right? 
Um, and then here's the paraphrase, big international businesses. Almost got it. A couple of you got the international part. Chen says huge companies. Uh, nope, Chen, that was only in your mind. Okay. All right. So uh, big international businesses. It's really good practice to do this, students. So a great practice for improving your listening. Your listening scores is to identify the uh, paraphrasing used in the audio uh, for the questions. Okay, like the example here. Large corporations equals big international businesses. Yeah, corporations, right? So uh, that's what you can do. You can make a list. So make a list like this, right? Okay. Alexander, yeah, we've got lots of different names, but what we want to do, uh, we can say multinational enterprises. So there are lots of ways to say big corporations, um, conglomerates, etc. But what we want to do is we want to identify the paraphrasing used by the IELTS audio for the questions, okay? That's, uh, and for the question booklet. That's, that's a really good way to do it, okay? All right, let's hop on back to the um, questions here. Whammo! There we go. Look at that. We're just zipping through it all. Well, that was maybe a bit much. <laughs> all right, let me do it a little bit differently here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Calm down a little bit, right? Calm down a little bit. Okay, there's my little box. All right. Okay, 40 there. All right. Just organizing. A lot of, a lot of moving parts here in these live classes. Okay, um, so uh, profit, that's the end of our uh, flow chart. When you're doing the flow chart, just one last point on that. If you miss an answer, don't stop, don't freak out, keep going because if you don't, the flow chart is done and then you'll never get it back, okay? Chen says, like a rocket ship. Um, all right, uh, so number 25, let's do this. Uh, some people, so here, no more than three words, always pay attention to the instructions and or a number, okay? Uh, some people will lose their jobs under free trade agreements, but we must emphasize the needs of the something and not be sidetracked by the needs of the. This was an interesting one. I had a similar question in my IELTS exam when I did it. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, but we must emphasize the needs of the something, and it makes sense, use logic, right? And this is one question, so you need both of these answers on the same line in the paper-based exam, okay? Uh, the few, okay, so many and few, all right? You need both. So in the paper-based exam, you would write many, and then you can put a comma and put few, okay? In the computer-based exam, you just type it or you drag and drop it and you're done. But you need both for 25, okay? Uh, free trade lowers the price of many goods because it increases what? What does uh, it increase? And again, if you understood the topic, the pros and the cons, you probably got this correct. Yep, don't write money, Chen. Don't write money. You got to get the right answers. Many and few. Number 26 is competition. Yes, it is competition. Okay, 
Uh, now we're into the um, we're into the uh, the table completion here. Uh, when you got a table, pay really careful attention to the topic of the table. Notice how it's cause and effect. So you're listening for words like because, therefore, as a result, as. Okay, so all of those linking words that show cause and effect, really pay attention for those, okay? So countries enter into free trade agreements. And this jeopardizes human rights standards. Okay, uh, sweatshops collapse. The conditions are highlighted in the where? Chandam, Pujan, Anuj, say media. You're correct. They're highlighted. They're shown in the media, right? The realization that such incidences are not isolated, so they don't just happen once. Implore companies and something. So if it's companies, then number 28 is going to be also a noun. And Anuj, Chen, you almost got it right. Fuang, you almost got it right. Rakwe and Chayani got it right. Why did you get it wrong, Chen? Why did you get it wrong, Fuang? <clears throat> hmm? What happened? There's a reason. That's right, Chen. It's the missing S. Notice that I even highlighted this for you. Company Z. Okay. If you miss the S, it's not plural. If you just have government and you don't have the S, it's wrong. It has to be plural. There's a rule in English. Nouns have to have parallel grammar when they're in a series. So if this is plural, this has to be plural. If you're in the paper-based exam and you miss that S, or if you're in the computer-based and it's a typed answer, and you miss the S, you lose that mark on that S, unfortunately. But that's the way it works. That's the language. That's the rules of the language, okay? So implore companies and governments to raise the bar, okay? All right, so correct word, governments with an S, countable. 29 and 30, um, trying to read all this with the audio playing is almost impossible. I don't wanna say impossible, but almost impossible. So I'm not going to read this while I'm listening to the audio or this for number 30. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay careful attention to the question. What is Dr. Young's main point in advocating for free trade? And then I'm going to capture the answer. Dr. Young says that free trade is better because it's not perfect, but it helps to make the whole world better. Everybody else catch that? Chandan, while you're listening to the audio, write in small letter. After the audio is done, you can change it all to big letters, okay? So I was like, okay, that's gotta be the answer. So now let's see if anything matches to my answer, okay? So here's my answer or my question and answer. Now I'm gonna find the match, okay? Now remember, I'm not there at the IELTS exam with you. Well, maybe I am inside your head, but I'm not going to be typing notes for you, that's for sure. So you have to do this. Um, free trade agreements are the single biggest economic driver for making the world a better place. Single biggest economic driver? What? Um, free trade agreements are not perfect, but they're a good step towards increasing global welfare. Hey, that sounds good. Free trade agreements are not always positive, but can be an important way to level the playing field. Um, yeah, B for sure. Okay, so if you got B, you're good, you're golden. All right, everybody got that? So what's the trick with multiple choice? Pay attention to the question, capture the answer, okay? 
you will not be able to read all of the choices in time. And by the time you do read all the choices, you're going to miss the answer. Did everybody catch that? Take a note, especially when you have really long answers and lots of them. Okay, you cannot catch the answer. So I did the same thing here. Um, what is Dr. Sturgeon main point for protectionism? I took some notes. Uh, Dr. Sturgeon says the wealthy get wealthy. Average citizens don't benefit. They lose their jobs. Something like that. Okay, um, so uh, let's see if anything matches. Overall wealth is increased in society. Mm, no, that doesn't make sense. Middle class jobs are the foundation of the economy that works for the few and not just for the... What? Uh, free trade agreements are bad because they concentrate wealth in the hands of an elite few. The rich get richer. That sounds right. So, see it is. Right? It's very hard to catch that paraphrasing if you're trying to just stare at the questions, especially with so many answers like that. Okay, if you're just staring at the answers, I should say. So, um, question here, students, is what'd you get correct out of uh, 10 here for part three? So, part three, it was 10 questions. Um, how did you do? What did you get from 10? <clears throat> Chen says eight because of silly mistakes. Well, don't worry, Chen. That's what the review time is for. So, missing S's, uh, writing money instead of many. You can fix those uh, in the review time. So just pay attention. Fix those in the review time, Chen. Owal says 10 out of 10. That's fantastic. Alfaz says 3. Ay, caramba. Um, Chandan says there's a problem from Nepal to pay. Uh, send me an email, Chandan, and I will help you out. Uh, Fuang says a seven to ten. I'll, te I'll, I'll test that with our VPN, Chandan. I'll see if I can pay from Nepal, okay? Nepal pay test, got you, okay? Um, students, you should be going for like six or more, okay? Six or greater uh, for um, your part three. So if you're getting less than six in part three, more practice, more checking your paraphrasing, more learning strategies. Again, you can do that on our websites, okay? All right, let's go back to the website. Again, um, you can join our premium version of our website by clicking the uh, big red button there. We're an IELTS test registration center. You can see that you can register in some countries. Uh, we're a British Council partner and IDP affiliate, so you're in a good place with us. Um, when you join our premium package, go to your My Student account and you will see audio CDs and we're going to listen to part four and answer some questions. So everybody, get your headphones on, put your earbuds in, turn up the speakers and let's get listening. Um, you do have volume controls by the way in IELTS or you should. Okay, um, don't crank it too loud. Uh, make sure you have a good, comfortable, clear volume. Okay, not too loud, not too quiet. All right, um, so here we go. If it's really loud, it will actually um, uh, impede your thinking. So not too loud, okay? All right, uh, here we go. CD5, track four, um, let's do it. Now turn to section 4. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listening section 4. You will hear a university lecture on the famous artist Michelangelo. Now listen carefully 
and answer questions 31 to 40. Good to see you all. As you know, we're having an exam a week from today. Material from today's class will be included on the exam, but material from the final two classes of the week will not be included. I hope this will give you an opportunity to revise enough to perform well on the exam. With that administrative business out of the way, I'd like to begin today's lecture on the lesser known works and endeavors of the famous Italian Renaissance artist Michelangelo. While Michelangelo is best known for his painting of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, he was also the creator of a number of other highly respected works. Among these are the Pieta, a statue of Mary holding a deceased Jesus, and the statue David, said to be the representative of the perfect male form. But Michelangelo was not just a painter and a sculptor. One of his crowning achievements is St. Peter's Basilica, a project he was lead architect on for the 17 years preceding his death in 1564. While the basilica wasn't completed until 1626, over 60 years after his death, Michelangelo's influence on the structure was immense, as he had laid out many plans for the structure during his lifetime, many of which were faithfully carried out under the reign of future popes and future architects. Michelangelo's fingerprints are all over modern Rome, and especially what is today Vatican City. Not only through his paintings, frescoes and sculptures, but also through his architectural achievements. In addition to his influence on St. Peter's Basilica, Michelangelo also redesigned the famous Capitolini Hill area of Rome and designed many chapels within the walls of the Vatican. Michelangelo was also tasked with a number of pet projects over the years. These projects were not one that the man himself wanted to undertake, but was compelled to because of monetary considerations or simply loyalty to the Pope. For example, when Pope Julius II ordered him to construct a three times life-size bronze statue of the Pope, Michelangelo had no choice but to accept. The project took up more than two years of his life, and four years after its completion, the work was unceremoniously melted down to construct cannons. Additionally, the conditions under which he was made to work were often sorely substandard. For years, he lived and worked with four other men in a cramped apartment with little to no privacy and no room for his creative juices to flourish. It is interesting to imagine what a genius such as Michelangelo could have accomplished given reign over his own creativity. I personally believe the world is a poor place for him having not been allowed this luxury. However, on the other hand, Perhaps Michelangelo's sometimes tortured life imbued his works of art with something more than just artistic genius. Although Michelangelo is a celebrated figure for his works of art and well respected for his architectural acumen, his literary works are virtually unknown to the world. He was a virtuoso of Renaissance art, celebrated in his lifetime and venerated centuries after his death, but his writings never made an impact on the society in which he lived, nor in the years since. Michelangelo was an avid writer of poetry and found that poetry was an invaluable escape from the grind of his everyday work life, especially during the year spent arduously painting the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Poetry provided an outlet for his frustrations, fears, beliefs, and desires. Those who want to know the real Michelangelo must go beyond his frescoes and sculptures and dig deep into his personal writings. There, one will find a rather tortured soul harmed by years of physical, political, professional, and personal strife. That is the end of section four. You will now have half a minute to All check right. your answers. Check those answers. Let's stop the audio. Again, um, students, on the website, you'll see lots of uh, services. And if you see this, um, this red uh, dot here, or this red button it means you can uh, register for your at home idp ielts exam through the website okay if you don't see it it's because it's not available in your country yet okay everybody um so let's uh let's check these answers out let's see what's going on 
Uh, now you notice that part four, it's just, it's continuous. There's no breaks, no stops, and it's fast. Yeah, part four is often faster. It's in many cases a university lecture. It's a professor that's speaking. They're speaking at a very natural speed. Um, that speed can be easily this fast, okay? This um, this professor was a little bit fast spoken, but not not that fast. You, you can hear sometimes professors who are even faster than that. Probably not in the IELTS, but in the real world, yes. So uh, let's... Um, Let's do this. So the first one was a fairly easy kind of lead in. Um, number 31, materials from the third week of class. They are on the exam or not on the exam, A or B? Which was it? Okay. Third class of the week, yeah, it's not on the exam, okay? So she says last couple of classes this week, they won't be on the exam. We can figure out the, exam, uh, the answer here is a B. Let's change the color so you don't confuse it with the strategies. There we go. The other type of green there. So that's B. Yes. Um, material from the current class. She very clearly says this. Okay. So material from this class um, and the previous class will be on the exam. So it's A. Okay. So it's B and A. Okay. For 31 and 32. And then she goes heavy into the topic of the famous um, architect, painter, sculptor, Michelangelo. If you don't know who Michelangelo is, well, here's your chance to learn. Um, listening part four will often introduce new information that most people will not be familiar with. So be ready for that. Okay. Everybody heard that? That was a really important point. Thumbs up. Okay. Part four of the IELTS listening will introduce new information that most people are not familiar with unless you're lucky, okay? The goal here is the IELTS exam is checking how well can you understand new information. Clearly, for a lot of people who are doing the academic IELTS, they need to be able to understand new information in English in their classes. So they're not trying to be mean. They're not trying to trick you. They're trying to prepare you or see if you are prepared enough to do university or college, okay? Also, if you're going into some jobs, you obviously have to be able to understand new information. So um, here, uh, let's do it. Other works, pay attention to the topics, okay? Follow along, a lot of it is paraphrased. While Michelangelo is perhaps most famous for painting the Sistine Chapel, he is also famous for a number of other highly respected works, including the Pieta. Names are good because they can help you position so you know where you are in the audio. You can't really change a name, right? You can't paraphrase it. So uh, if you see Pieta with a capital P, right? or Sistine Chapel with a capital S and a capital C, you know that you will hear um, those uh, audio. Okay, that's an ear. <laughs> All right, so position yourself. Okay, that's where you're like, okay, something's coming, something's coming. It's Pieta, I just heard Pieta, number 33 is coming. And the statue name, now it was kind of tricky because they threw an extra piece of information in here, but then they gave you this male beauty. So what was the answer for 33? It wasn't a statue of Mary holding Jesus because that doesn't make sense, right? So they, they mentioned two statues. It was the statue of David, right? So I, I've seen both of these really cool, very beautiful pieces of art. I've, I've had the luck of, of seeing both. So... Um, Yes, a thought to symbolize a male beauty, indeed. David, big D. Raquea, write a small d, and you'll get it wrong. Yeah, so notice everybody what Sarah's saying, our chat moderator. She did the exam a little while ago, I think maybe about a month ago now, right, Sarah? A little bit more, maybe. And Sarah says, my part four was about brain cells, and they talked about some researchers that I have read a book about back then, I was so lucky, right? So yeah, sometimes you get really lucky, but if nobody read that book that Sarah read, then you're just listening to a 
person talking or people talking about brain cells and some researchers. Okay, thank you for sharing that, Sarah. Um, it's really good, students, when some of you have done the exam and then you help other people who are here and watching these videos know that this isn't just something crazy. It's not like, oh, IELTS will never give you a topic like that. No, they will. They'll give you some pretty interesting topics. Okay, architectural achievements. Uh, far more than just a painter, Michelangelo was also an architect. He was lead architect on St. Peter's Basilica for something until his death. Um, yeah, two words, 17 years. That's right. Until his death in 1564, though the structure was not completed until 60 years after his death. His fingerprints are all over the resulting structure because future something and something, okay, faithfully carried out his designs. So two answers, you can kind of figure them out. Use your logic. Uh, Anahita, if you misspell those nouns, you will get it wrong. Okay. So, um, Fuang says post and architecture. Zippy says popes and architects. Do we have the word popes and do we have the word architects in this summary? Yes, we do. You see it here. Pope. Pope. How is Pope spelt? How is Pope spelt? With a capital P. Don't write it with a small one. You could get it wrong. So if you see the word elsewhere, make sure you use the information that's available to you to help you. Okay. Popes. Popes and architects architectural right up there it'll help you with the spelling keep your eyes open uh, architects are the people that uh, engineer buildings architect is a small a because it's a common noun okay popes is a unique word in english and in many languages uh, it takes a special feature um, and it takes a capital p okay but if you don't know that, you're like, well, Adrian, I don't know that. Well, yeah, but they give it to you here. So the examiner's argument is pay attention to the content, right? So uh, future popes and architects faithfully carried out his designs. Exactly, Chayani, there is a clue. Um, and Chayani, you know, that's a good point. Uh, students, there are many clues throughout the IELTS as long as you're really calm, confident, paying attention. Michelangelo's influence is also apparent on around the rest of the city of what? Number 36. Chen, it's not the Vatican. If you listen carefully to the audio, it's not the Vatican. Okay. Alexander, that's right. Rome. It's the city of Rome. It's a tricky one. If you know your geography, and this is where it helps, you know that Vatican City is inside the city of Rome. Vatican City is quite small, or Vatican State even. It's quite small, um, but it's inside the city of Rome, and Michelangelo's works aren't just in the Vatican City. They're all around Rome. And if you pay attention to the audio, you go to the transcripts. I'm not going to go there again. But if you go to the transcripts, you will see that the speaker says, you can see Michelangelo's works all around the city of Rome, not just in the Vatican City. Okay. And then another um, word here to help you position, Capitolini Hill. And then it keeps going. So, servant of the papacy. Um, he was also a loyal servant of the Pope. 
Sometimes this was important work, though sometimes it was rather pointless. He once built a something of the Pope, only to see it melted down for cannon parts, and not the camera. We're talking about the kaboom cannon here. Um, so, uh, what did he build? Not a brown statue, Chayani. If you're not sure, just write statue. It was a bronze statue. You know, like um, when you um, have uh, uh, a competition, then you have uh, your gold medal, right? Um, you have a uh, silver medal. I don't have silver, so I'm just gonna use a black here. And then you have a uh, bronze uh, medal, right? So that's the bronze, uh, okay? So uh, gold, silver, bronze. Okay, so it's a bronze statue. Okay, yeah, if you write statue, you will probably get it right. Although be careful, some IELTS, uh, they're very strict and they're like, no, you need bronze statue. It's listening part four, we need specific details. So if you know that it's bronze, write bronze. If you're not sure it's bronze, if you didn't hear that part, then just write statue and cross your fingers. Hopefully they'll give it to you. Okay, there's no guarantees. They don't, the IELTS doesn't have to give it to you. They can say, nope, we only give it to bronze statue. Okay, only to see it melted down for cannon parts. What a shame. Um, moreover, the something he had to work in, this was kind of, this was catch the word, right? So if you got this, you got it. Uh, conditions, plural. You got it, you got it. The conditions, plural, 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 conditions. He had to work in were often substandard, often being forced to live and work in small, cramped places with a number of other men. Literary works. It is interesting to think what he could have made if he was given the freedom to explore his own. Number 39, anybody? Creativity, that's right. Okay. While his life may have been difficult, some people argue that this difficulty made him a better artist. Something was an important way to escape the difficulties. They don't, they, she said it very differently. She said it was an important outlet to come to terms with his challenging life or something like that um, but she did say the answer very clearly um, anybody get that LTD it was not polar chi um, Fuang Pujan it was poetry that's right okay so poetry is the right answer wrote some poems Michelangelo's po I've never heard about it myself but okay Michelangelo's poems all right, um, so those were the right answers. Uh, part four, definitely practice it so you can get a lot of answers correct. Uh, students, what did you get? So what was your score from, um, from 40? If you, well, from 10, sure. But um, ooh, we've got lots more colors here. Let's go purple. Uh, nah, it's too dark. <laughs> I've just realized I've got more colors to play with. I even have silver. I could have done silver. Look at that. I just found silver. Um, so uh, what did you what did you get out of uh, ten? So Pujan got nine. That's great. LTD got six. Yeah, if you're getting six, seven, eight in part four, you're doing good. Um, what did you get out of forty? If you were here last week for part one and two, if you missed that class, it's on the channel, so just check it out. Uh, last week, you'll see listening part one and two. Those are the first two parts of this exam, okay? Uh, Chayani, 33 is great, okay? LTD, yeah, six is not bad for part four, okay? All right. Um, yep, Sarah, always oh, getting a little bit Fun and fancy. Uh, Pujan, good luck on the exam tomorrow. Hey, Pujan, you got 9 out of 10 on this part. You're going to be 
doing just great. You've got nothing to worry about, okay? <laughs> Anahita says, that's not silver. That's gray. Come on, give me a break, Anahita. Uh, silver and gold are not really colors, right? They're gradients. Um, okay, um, so uh, if you got, you know, 33, that's fine. Uh, students, um, if you're on the website, okay, at the very, very bottom, there's a score calculator, you can, you can check your score. If you got 33, it'll show you that. Ooh, look at you, you got uh, 7.5, okay. Um, if you got more, if you got like, uh, ooh, let's see, 38, you got 8.5. Uh, Fuang, if you got 30, you got a seven, okay. So check the score calculator on the website. Again, uh, students, uh, the listening materials were from this website as well. And um, you can get the premium package by clicking the big red button there. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access. We don't believe in trying to charge you every month. That's ridiculous. Who knows how long it will take you to pass the IELTS. So just pay once, start studying, start learning, click that big red button and you're golden. Um, for the general IELTS, uh, the green background, okay? Click that big uh, red button there. Tomorrow I'm back um, with um, speaking uh, part two for uh, members and then a speaking part three for everybody. Okay, so check out the classes tomorrow. Uh, AEHelp.com, GLTSHelp.com, that's the ticket to your great band score. Uh, Sarah, thank you for moderating the class. Chen, Chayani, Fuang, members, thank you for the great participation. Anahita, LTD, 54, all of you wonderful subscribers, thank you for your support. And uh, for those of you, Pujan, doing the exam tomorrow, Best of luck, all right? Fingers crossed that you do a great job. Be you, be confident. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world right now. Keep up the good work. Goodbye, everybody.